November 19th, 2004, 15 years later, uh, one of the, something that will always be mentioned when they mention Stephen Jackson is the mouse in the palace, but I want to take a, a look back because something, a football version of that somewhat happened, minus going in the stands, but we're, you know, last week, um, Miles Garrett, mm -hmm. um, what some are calling a questionable late hit, hit, uh, hit Mason Rudolph. Uh, late in the game, game was already in hand. Uh, I guess Mason Rudolph took offense to it, tried to pull his helmet off, didn't work. Mm -hmm. Got his helmet pulled off. Then he tried to rush him like he was really going to do something to him. And then got bopped with the helmet. Yeah. Ugh. And, uh, you know, it's Miles Garrett's, you know, life is probably changing right now. You know what I mean? Just from that incident. Uh, you know, if you could tell him anything or, or what he's thinking right now, take a what would it be? Well, it's a different time, you know. Um, when that happened with us, we couldn't we couldn't come out and speak. There was no social media no yet. No social media, not, not like that, and, and we couldn't control our own narrative. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I think he has the the outlet to say exactly what happened, to walk with people with the video that might not see the things mm -hmm. that he saw actually actually being on the field. Um, a lot of, you know, I think we, we had to sit back and just take it, you know, with everything being on TV. These guys are thugs. Uh, these guys are, are rich babies. They shouldn't be in the NBA. I had never been in trouble with the law of my life before that brawl. I had never been in the NBA fight in the game before that brawl. So, so I think he just, I think he should just, just stay quiet. But when he has his time to speak, say everything. Don't hold back. He needs to come on here. He needs to come on all the smoke and, and, and say everything. Well, I mean, if he really want to get his story of, I think the way the platform we created and, and the way all the players are respecting, I think this is the place for him. Absolutely. Because he know we're not going to judge him. And Absolutely. at the same time, what, when talking to us, we understand. Been because there. we've been we've been there. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And it, it's, I can't tell I can't tell him another show he could go on and talk right. to where people can relate to him like we can. I feel you. So take me back to your journey getting to the Pacers? Well, in 03, I won a championship with the Spurs. Um, I was looking for my big contract out there. I, had, I hit some big, big, big shots. But uh, as you know now, you can see now, the Spurs were favoring three guys, mm -hmm. Ginobili, Tony, and um, Tim. Tim Duncan. And Ginobili and Tony were up the same time I was up. You know, And uh, I think they wanted to give them the, the big number contracts and lowball me, it was like three years nine million and I, I felt insulted you know we wouldn't have had a championship without me uh, we wouldn't have made it out the Western Conference without me and uh, so I decided to go to Atlanta for one year and prove myself and around that time that year Mike Brown took a uh, assistant head coach job in Indiana with Rick Carlisle and during the course of that year at Atlanta you know I was I think I was having a great year but the second half of the season I was like sixth, sixth in scoring in the, in the whole league and um, Mike Brown came, called me up. We played him, and he pulled him and Rick pulled me to the side. He's like, we know you didn't get your contract this summer. Keep a level head, finish the season healthy, and we're gonna bring you. The, you know, we're gonna mm. give you a contract next year. So, with knowing that, that that helped me the rest of the season, because all I had to do was put up numbers. Right. Our team was shitty. We was trash. <laughs> uh, we, it was me, Bobby, uh, Bob Sura, and Jason Terry. That was it. Yeah, and uh, rest in peace, Jason Collier. We had yeah. Jason Collier as well. Uh, we was a small team. They had no plans of winning. Mm -hmm. Terry Stouts was our coach at the time. But uh, I was just putting up numbers. And uh, just, just the fact that they came and told me that I was going to get my deal that summer, mm -hmm. um, I knew the team was already good. They were one of the best teams in the East. And right. to, be, to know I was going to be part of, uh, be a part of that was good, was special. So you end up getting your deal the following summer? I ended up getting my six year, six year, six year deal for thirty six, but it equaled out being six years forty two. Okay, so now you're in Indiana with a team that had a bitter Eastern Conference exit in the finals to the Pistons. So you didn't really come in in that situation understand what kind of rivalry that was, did you? Well, I, I really the only rival I understood at that time was the Spurs and Lakers, mm -hmm. and that wasn't the f type of rivalry that Detroit and Indiana was. Mm -hmm. Like this was some street shit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> That's not real. This is. Some back, some jail, prison beef basketball. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? And uh, I walked into it, but I, you know, I have respect, so much respect. Chauncey was like a big brother. Rip, man, Rip graduated in high school, 96 McDonald's All-America. So we were great, great friends. So the, 
walking into that, I didn't know that I was gonna have to pick a side like that to rather. I knew I was gonna pick a side playing basketball, but to to, to start a fight in a brawl, I didn't know I was gonna have to pick a side like that. So here we are, the end of the, of the game. You guys got the game in hand. You're at 15, mm -hmm. 15 points. Uh, to me, looking at the play, a hard foul maybe, mm -hmm. maybe not. I mean, it's Ron. Obviously, Ben took offense to it. Um, you know, looked like Ben wanted to bite Ron's head off. Word. They, you know, you guys did a good job of keeping them all uh, separate. Ron gets hit with something. He charges up in the stands. At that moment, what made you charge? Well, at that moment, my adrenaline, I was already in fight mode. If you look at it, you know, like I just said, man, Rip was cool. But at that moment, when we was, you know, we were up 15, we, this was the game that was going to separate us from everybody in the Eastern Conference. We were 14 and so we had the best record, of them, I think the best record in the league at the time. And we had beat almost all the big teams except Detroit. And, um, you know, at the end of the game, we were beating them. And um, I just knew that something went right. You know what I mean? Because during the whole game, it was, it was some disrespectful stuff said in the game. So at the end of the game, we're at the free throw line. And uh, I'm shooting the free throw. And I hear, I hear somebody in the back saying, you can get your foul now, Ron. I'm, you know, I'm not really paying no attention, you know what I'm saying? But I'm not, you got to think. I'm not thinking about, mm -hmm. this is B from last year. Like, they was in the, a hard-fought battle in the, for the Eastern Conference Finals last mm -hmm. year. And uh, so I didn't really pay no attention. So I'm guarding Ben. I just let him score. And Ron come from out of nowhere and just push him. And Ben had just dealt with a death in his family at the time. Somebody mm, had passed. He was going to do something already. Yeah, but not only that, we was busting their ass on national TV for the world to see. They were in their feelings, trust me. Oh, we served them up, bro. We served them a nice, shiny ass whooping with baby all. I'm talking <laughs> about, bow, take this ass whooping on national TV. You know what I mean? And when, when, when Ron fouled Ben, I think Ben's response was, not only was he dealing with a death, but they just came in here and embarrassed the shit out of us. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So when that happened, okay, I'm thinking, bam, okay, let's just break it up. I'm trying to break it up. But as we breaking it up, you got Lindsey Hunter, you got Rip Hamilton. They still talking shit. So like I say, it, it, you know, tell you, you already know, it don't take nothing but a second for me. You ain't mm -hmm. got to put, put no battery in my back. Mm -hmm. As soon as I saw that, if you look at the tape, I walked all around the whole circle and squared up. Took my jersey off, you know, so my, my punch could come out fluid. I want my jersey tucked, they're going to hinder my punches. Mm -hmm. So I pulled my jersey out, square up, nobody run up. You know what I'm saying? So in that, that moment, I'm in fight mode. You know what I'm saying? And, and it's a whole bunch of stuff going on. But what, what really egged everything on, they didn't do a good job of getting Ben off the court. He kept doing, she threw something like Kept throwing stuff, mm -hmm. kept throwing stuff. And Ron was cool. Well, people don't know, Ron was told that in his session. To find a place, when you get to, like, you're about to explode, find a place to calm down. Ron would lay it on the table and put, <laughs> it, put it was the craziest shit ever, but he put the headphones on, he found his happy place. You know what I'm saying? So he was cool. This is still a whole lot of pushing going on at that time, though. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, Ben's still throwing stuff. So by that time, when the cup come, I'm just in survival mode. And once I saw my teammate go, yeah, I didn't think twice. You know, I, I, it felt like I was back in Port Arthur and when, in the club when somebody threw a punch at one of my homeboys. Mm -hmm. It's an all-out brawl now. I'm in Sacramento at the time, and we're just coming out of halftime. Uh, um, I think we're playing Memphis. And I turn back and look, and I'm like, damn, that's a fight. Damn, they're in the stands. So we call the whole team. Pretty much the whole team comes back in the locker room. And I want to say we're late out to the second half because we're in there watching this all go down. So... Ron gets up in there. Ron initially get, points out the wrong dude, right? He grabs the wrong dude. Wrong he dude. He runs up the stands and grabs the and wrong guy. And then out of nowhere, he, Ron, Ron hits dude. Someone throws something at Ron, and then that's once Ron is tangled up with this dude, and then that's where you come in and clean old dude out. Yeah, and what people don't know, Matt, when I go in the stands, I go up and initially grab Ron. Mm -hmm. This is why I hate why I got labeled. You know what I'm saying? I went up there to actually grab. You see me? I turn and grab Ron. But as I grab Ron, another fan throw another beer in his face. Mm -hmm. Come on, man. You, come here. You got to pay for that. Right. Let, me, let me look at your whole face. Mm -hmm. And he lucky that they grabbed me because I was finna a Lewis man of him and stump him out. And <laughs> make his teeth touch the curb. I was finna stump him out. You know what I mean? Because I was in fight mode. I was in survival right. mode. You got to right. think. At that point, we didn't run into the stands. Right. So what people don't know is 
where the arena was, that's not Detroit. Mm -hmm. That's nowhere close to Detroit. The Palace and If we would have been in Detroit, in a lot of players would have been knocked out, probably yeah. damn near dead in there. Right. But where we were, you know, when we got into the stands, it wasn't that, it wasn't going crazy. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We were really clearing people out. You know what I'm saying? But the fact that my my, my teammates had came grab me and pulled me off, you know. I, that kind of saved me some money too, because yeah. I was going to hurt that dude. Well, that's what people. Know. I I think you know not to make light, and I, I kind of laugh here and there because it, it's it's happened so long ago, and, and and we've been able to joke about it since. But on, on a on a serious tip, people don't understand. Like as players, you can't just say anything or do anything to us just because we're players. Right. I mean, we hear the crazy. I mean, in Utah together, we heard so much racial, so many racial slurs, and throughout my career, people have said stuff, and I'm like. They would expect I, you to play through it. Yeah, you know what I mean. Or you, you're big. No, like that's you don't you don't disrespect men like that. You know right. what I mean. And I think there's a <clears throat> there's some kind of understanding that people think, oh, just because we bought a paid a bunch of money for this ticket, we can say and do what we want to you. You know what I mean. So I, I mean, talk is one thing. You know, you go up and, and you know they start throwing stuff and doing stuff like that. that's a whole other thing. So, you know, f when I initially saw it, I'm just like, damn, that's gonna be some trouble. But I was thinking like, I understand it. You know yeah. what I mean? Like you can't in the heat of the moment. You know, someone's throwing, a fan is throwing something at you. Like, that shit should never happen. There's it's no amount of money <clears throat> that you can pay me that will allow, allow somebody to, to belittle me yeah. when I show everybody respect. Right. I'm not, I'm not accepting it in, no, in, in right. no shape or form, especially now in any other place, any other setting, throwing a beer in somebody's face Get is assault. Yeah. No, on, no, man. you're going to jail. Right. You're going to jail for that. And if, if you in a bar, somebody throw a beer in your face and you hit them back, you get off because that's self-defense. But me, <laughs> I get 30 games and, and mm -hmm. find them the $3 million. Well, talk to me about that. How did that, I mean, that, that split second, you know, being a great teammate, having your man's back, change you uh, career-wise, financially? Take us through that. Well, having the game of basketball taken from me, I think that's the lowest I've ever been in my life. 30 games, huh? Just, you know, the fact that I can't play basketball, like that shit took, that's, it took a lot out of me. And um, just sitting at home, smoking with the homies, playing football in the snow, trying to find something to do, it was nothing that can give me what basketball gave me. So that, that was a, um, a, 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 a big turn in my life, you know what I'm saying? Because I wanted to get back so back, it made me appreciate the game like I was in high school, like I was in middle school again. So it was a blessing in disguise, besides being fined and losing the money and all that. It brought me, it gave me the love back for the game from being away from it so long. You feel like it cost you, you know, some stuff though, as far as all-star games and... Man, I mean, I, I think that's probably the only thing I regret, man, because like, I was, I was labeled mm -hmm. a bad guy mm -hmm. off the helping my teammate. Mm -hmm. And um, I know it's at least two or three years in my career, I was definitely an all-star, I deserved to make it. Mm -hmm. But I got labeled by referees, I got labeled by coaches. You know, um, it was even a time when I was in Charlotte. And um, I got to Charlotte, there was a decent team, but they were at the bottom of the East. As you know, mm -hmm. I get us to the playoffs, mm -hmm. you know, and around, around all-star time, Gerald Wallace made it. But um, when Gerald Wallace made it, everybody on the team, from the coaches to MJ and them, feel like, well, Jack is the reason why we're here. Mm -hmm. You know, we happy for G-Dub, but Jack is the reason why we're here. Mm -hmm. And to the point where, you know, MJ made a call, you know, like, we, don't, we know it's more than just basketball mm -hmm. now because look at, look at his numbers, yeah. look at where we at now since he's been here. And um, even further back to in Golden State. In Golden State, you had the year that you should have been an all-star. Yeah, but you know, start, when I first got there, starting off those seven games suspended, that hurt, that hurt me. From another incident. That hurt me, you know right. what I'm saying? But MJ had made that call and Paul Pierce had got hurt. So it was a spot. They gave it to David Lee. My numbers was 10 times better than his. They weren't even in the playoffs. So at, at that point, I knew it was, it was because of that. So it, that, that type of shit hurt because you mm -hmm. know how hard we work and you know how many our, our people already count us out and we had to prove ourselves mm -hmm. every night anyway. So that, all that from the brawl, that shit still hurt to this day. Did, how, what, what was life like off the court? Uh, I mean, I know you probably. I'm a rock love star. Over, they yeah. love it. People love me for it. Uh -huh. Like, like if, all I hear is, man, I wish I had a friend like you. Right. I need a friend like you. You know what I mean? And and I and I appreciate that because I'd rather be known for somebody's being a good friend and being an asshole mm -hmm. or a dick. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm 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 labeled as being a good teammate. And if me going in the stands sets the standard of what a teammate should be, 
I yeah. rock with it. I was always taught growing up to protect my brother and sister at all costs. Like they fight, you fight. That's why I grew up fighting my whole entire right life. Wrong. It was just, it was second nature to me. Tell me what it was like for you, what triggered, what, what in your past triggered you to react the way you did uh, during the brawl for Ron? Um, well, you know, just growing up in Port Arthur, Texas, you know, everybody know everybody. So just that I got my brother back, I'm my brother's keeper attitude, that's just around the neighborhood with your friends. But when I lost my older brother, I, I was like, shit, five minutes away. And um, he was jumped by a couple guys, they ended up beating him, uh, hitting him with bottles and pipes and shit. And he ended up getting 18 staples in his head where eventually, as soon as the, the ambulance got there, he was already brain dead. And um, just knowing that I was that close and couldn't get there, you know, I know, shit, if we both probably would have been dead. I probably would have saved his life. I don't know how it would have played out. But just knowing how small my city is and how much we was together and I couldn't get there, that made that. Not only I was already that type of guy, but that made me become more of a brother to you and everybody else. You know what I'm saying? So when that situation with Ron, You're felt like your brother, I have to. Yeah, I mean, I, and that's what I say throughout my career. Like I treat my teammates like family. I was always taught to protect my family. So anytime, if you look at all my finds throughout my career, people were never fucking with me. It was because I was protecting the Blake or, or CP or, mm -hmm. or taking up for Kobe or taking up for my teammates because if you fuck with one, you fuck, you know, you fuck with all of us. And I think that's why we hit it off instantly. You know what I mean? We had, when you were in the, in the bra, I didn't know you, but I'm just like, damn, like everyone else, I thought like, that's a real motherfucker right there. Like someone that has your back. I mean, that's obviously some shit I would have did. You know, so when you came to Golden State and I seen your lips were a little bit dry, I knew you've been smoking dope. I was like, okay, so this is the dude that fights and he smokes weed. The, the, this is the match made in heaven. And, yeah. and I think we kind of hit it off from there on out because we are very similar in our upbringing and our thought process and our wearing our heart on our sleeve and we'll die for our brother, mm -hmm. literally or physically. You know what I mean? So it's just, it, 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 it's refreshing to see. And, and unfortunately before, like you said, you couldn't tell your story. So you've been labeled as this thug or this right. gang or like this, this too. and that. You know what I mean? So that was something I also had to learn to be like, okay, well, fuck the labels. If they don't know me, I don't give a fuck what they think. But that's easier said than done, and it's a process. You know what I mean? Like you said, you were labeled for being a thug, for having your brother's back. If he could have possibly went up there by himself and really got hurt. You know what I mean? It's so a the, whole different story. So the fact that you went up there and tried to help, but you get a bad rap for it, I know that stuck with you and burned for a while. It did. It did. And like, you know, just being the game being taken <clears throat> away from you and people saying this about you. Your kids hearing this, you know what I'm saying? Your mama hearing this, and you know that ain't you. You know what I mean? And you know you just being a, a good brother, a good teammate. It, 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 it was fucked up for a while, but at the end of the day, like you said, I had the attitude where should I had to call somebody to, to get some fucks to give because I don't have none. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I ran out of fucks to give, and 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 I became a better person after that. Time. Fifteen years later, knowing what you've known, you would have sacrificed and lost thirty games, three million possible all-star selections, bad reputation. Would you do it again? Again, right now, for him holding the camera, for him holding the mic, for him holding the camera, if we go somewhere together, I'd do it again. That's just the type of person I am. I didn't, I didn't do it for recognition or for people to say he a real motherfucker. That's just how I am, that's just how I was taught. So yeah, I'd do it again. I just regret, I just regret losing that money. That's Let me it. get it back. <laughs>